Hi there, and welcome to part one of this tutorial series I'm calling QLab for Sketch Comedy. My name is Derek Scully. I'm a comedy writer and actor in Los Angeles, and I also run tech for a lot of live comedy shows in LA. And today I want to show you why I love using QLab for live sketch comedy. So first, a little background on QLab. QLab is a queuing software designed specifically for theater. It can handle video, audio, and lighting cues, although I'll only be covering video and audio in this tutorial, and it's pretty much the industry standard for theater all over the world. It has paid licenses for its more advanced features, but the free version actually has everything you need for live sketch comedy. So let's start with the basics. So when you first open up QLab, this is what you will see. It will prompt you to either open an existing workspace or create a new one. So let's go ahead and create a new workspace. So this is our brand new workspace here. Now something I love about QLab is that you can just drag media straight in. You can drag in from an iTunes playlist, from a file folder, and QLab will work with a ton of different file types. So I'm gonna get us started here by dragging in this audio file of some rain falling and this audio file of a thunderclap. And just like in iTunes, you can drag cues around in your cue list into the order you want them. And then to play a cue, all you need to do is highlight where you want to start in the cue list and click go. Cool. So now we hear that rain falling. And uh, then you'll notice that QLab has already jumped us ahead to the next cue. And the other way that we can hit go is by hitting space on the keyboard. So I'm going to hit space now. And we get that thunderclap. Very cool. Now, before we go any further, I want to tell you about Panic Mode. Panic Mode is QLab's dramatic name for hitting escape. Hitting escape in QLab will stop all the cues that are playing with a short fade. So I'm going to hit escape right now. And now everything has stopped. Panic Mode comes in super handy when you're building your show and while you're rehearsing your show when you just need everything to stop and regroup. All right, let's get that rain going again. Now, let's say we wanted to make this a super heavy storm. We wanted to duplicate this thunderclap a couple times. Well, all we would need to do is copy and paste. So if I click on thunderclap and command C, then hit command V a couple times, then we go back up to the first thunderclap and hit go again, and again, and again. Now we got a pretty heavy storm going. Now, you'll notice that this rain cue is still playing because it still has time left. Cues in QLab will play until they've played themselves all the way through, or until we tell them to stop. So the rain cue will stop now, because it's played itself out. Now, let's say we wanted to stop the rain ourselves on a cue. All we need to do that is a stop cue. So I'm gonna go up here to this square, click on that, and now we've got this stop cue added to our cue list. But this stop cue has a red X on it. Anytime you see a red X in QLab, that means that the cue is broken. And if you wanna know why, just hover your mouse over the X. So the stop cue is telling us that it's broken because there is no target cue. What that means is the stop cue doesn't know what it's supposed to be stopping. So to tell the stop cue what it's stopping, or in QLab terms, tell it what its target cue is, we just drag the target cue on top of it. So in this case, we wanted to stop the rain, so we drag the rain on top of it. Now it knows to stop the rain. Now just to make things simpler, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these thunderclaps. So I'm gonna select all of those and use command delete. That's how you delete cues. And now I can go up here and play the rain. And at any point that I choose to, I can use the stop cue to stop the rain. But you don't always want a hard stop on an audio cue. Sometimes you want audio to fade out. Lucky for us, QLab has a fade cue. So to demonstrate that, first I'm going to delete that stop cue with command delete. And this time I'm going to click on the cue that we're targeting when I go up here to the toolbar and click on the fade icon. So. When I've done that, it's added a fade cue, and the fade cue already knows what it's targeting, as we can see here in the target column. But the cue is still broken. That's because no fade parameters have been enabled. So the way that we can fix that is by telling the fade cue how much to fade. So in the inspector, we can go to the audio levels tab and use this master slider here to tell the fade cue how much we need to fade the rain sounds. So in this case, we wanna fade the rain all the way out. So I'm gonna drag the slider all the way down to minus infinity. We also want to stop the rain when we finish uh, the fade. So I'm gonna check stop target when done. 
So let's see how that sounds. Go up here to rain and click go. And if I click go again, the rain fades out. Awesome. But something else the fade cue can do is just bed the audio down a little bit uh, so that it's quieter, but still there. So uh, instead of dragging it down to minus infinity, let's say I dragged it down to uh, say minus 10 dB. Uh, and then I can uncheck stop target when done. And let's see what that sounds like. If I play that rain again, and then trigger the fade cue. Now the rain is quieter, but it's still there. Pretty awesome. Now I'm gonna hit escape. We can also change the duration of the fade here in the action column. Uh, we can double click that, and then if we wanted that fade to be two seconds long, we could do that. Uh, you can also do that here in the inspector under basics or in curve shape. You can also change the type of curve if you wanna get really specific. Cool. Now I wanna use a new example to go over follow cues. So I'm gonna clear out this cue list by selecting all of it and command delete. And now I'm gonna drag in a new file called train sounds. Now train sounds, as you might guess, is the sound of a train. There you go, pretty standard train. So I teched a show once where a director wanted to hear a train in the background of a sketch, and then off of a dialogue cue, something that was said on stage, he wanted the train to stop immediately. So here's how I made that happen. I started with a fade and stop cue, just like the kind we just went over. Uh, I made a fade cue, made sure it faded all the way down to minus infinity and stop target when done, and I made it two seconds long. So that faded out that cue. But to really sell the sound of a train stopping, I also added this train screech sound effect. But I wanted the train screech to start as soon as the fade of the train sounds started. So here's how you can do that. In this column over here, underneath this little anchor icon, you can uh, add what's called an auto continue. So I put an auto continue on the fade and stop cue. What an auto continue does by default is it will go ahead and play the next cue at the same time as the cue that it's on. Uh, so let's see how that works in practice. I can hit go to start the train sounds. And then when I hit go again, it will start the fade and stop cue, which will then go immediately into the train screech. Now I've set it up so we can have a train running for the whole sketch and then stop it exactly when it needs to stop. Now the other type of follow cue is an auto follow. So to look at that, I'm going to clear my cue list again. For this new example, I'm gonna drag in some blackout music. Let's say that's some uh, blackout transition music that's happening between sketches and we want it to have uh, maybe a two second fade and stop cue that we will trigger when the next sketch needs to start. And then let's say that this game show music cue that I'm dragging in here is gonna start as soon as the next sketch begins, like it needs to happen right at the top of the sketch. Now, an auto follow cue can come in really handy there. Uh, what an auto follow does is it starts uh, the next cue as soon as the cue it's on is done. So in this case, let's put an auto follow onto this fade and stop cue, and now the game show music will start as soon as the fade and stop cue is done, as soon as our blackout transition music has faded out. So we've got it all set up, and let's see how that sounds. Cool, so we hit go and that funky blackout music started. And then if we hit go again, the fade and stop cue will happen and then go immediately into the game show music after the fade and stop cue is done. Awesome. So that can be really helpful when you need a cue to start right at the top of the next sketch, right after you're done fading out your transition music. By the way, I think a two second fade and stop is a really good rule of thumb for ending blackout transition music. All right, so those are all the basics of the interface, but there are a couple more things I wanna talk about before we move on to part two. One thing that I think is hugely helpful in QLab is the ability to trim cues with a waveform. So here in the inspector, we can go over to the time and loops tab on this blackout music track, and you'll see we have a waveform of the clip. And if we zoom in, 
all the way. When we go over here to the left, we can see there is a little bit of air right here at the top of the queue, and we can just trim that right in. That can be really helpful for queues that don't start immediately, and you really want them to uh, to start right when you trigger them. Uh, also in the Time and Loops tab, you can make things uh, loop by clicking here on Infinite Loop. And if there's a queue that is a little too loud or a little too soft, you can adjust the volume here in the Audio Levels tab. And now lastly, before we take a breather, I want to show you the active queues sidebar. To get to the active queues sidebar, we can go up to view, list carts, and active queues. And that'll pop up over here on the right. And make sure you click on active queues. And this is where you can see any queue that is currently playing. So if I start this blackout music track, you can see that playing there. And it'll also allow you to scrub anywhere you want in this weird, weird blackout song. You can even pause the queue, and you can stop an individual queue even if you haven't added a stop queue for it yet. I think this is really helpful for rehearsals where there's a long sequence that's timed to a track and an actor needs to jump back earlier in the track and try something again. It just gives you an extra degree of control. All right, that is it for part one of this tutorial. I'm gonna go drink some water now. In part two, I will go over visual cues, so stick around.